Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to create a repeating pattern in Canva and we're going to do it with the free version of Canva and we're going to make it so that we could easily change the background. So we're going to start by creating a design. So I'm going to do a custom size. I'm just doing something that's 2000 by 2000 just to speed things up. If you want a better quality, you could go to 4000 by 4000. I'll click create new design. Now the shapes that I'm going to use I have already been working with so I'm just going to elements and I'm going to the ones that I've recently used and these are some cake elements. What I did was I found one element that I liked and then went looking for others in a similar style. So I'm just going to drop in the ones that I want to use here. I think I only want five but let's just go and see how we go. So I'm going to select over all of them and drag them down to a size that's going to work a bit better inside my pattern. So I think I've got one more than I actually need so I think I'll take this one out. I'm going to place them roughly where I want them to go. Now traditionally when you're making patterns like this in an application like Canva the last thing that you would want to do is put things over the edge but I want to show you how you can get these patterns to work by just creating them all as one single pattern not by repeatedly saving bits and bringing them back in and that's going to work particularly well for people who are Canva users who are on the free version because you're going to have the flexibility of being able to adjust your backgrounds. So let's just go and put things roughly where I want them to be. Now in a traditional pattern swatch what would happen is that anything that's over this side would be repeated over here. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to grab this shape and we're going to move it until it is just over the edge in the middle. So you can see there's little lines appearing. There's a little sort of guideline and the one that I'm interested in is the vertical. So this is lined up perfectly over this side of the image. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and start dragging it to the left in this case. I'm going to add the shift key because that's going to drag it perfectly horizontally. And I'm going to take it, this copy, until it's in exactly the same place. So until I've got the middle of it exactly over that line. And I can just quickly double check it. It's in place there. So now that I've got it there, I'm going to select it. I'm going to shift click on the other half. So I've got these two pieces together and I'm going to group them. And by grouping them together they're going to move together so I can move them anywhere I like. I'm going to do the same with anything that is over the edge. So again I'm going to take this jam tart. It's not exactly jam biscuit. I don't know that it's exactly where I want it to be but I'm going to run it over the edge. Hold down the Alt key, hold down the Shift key, drag it over here until I've got it exactly in the middle. Let go of everything. Hold the Shift key and select its other half and then just group it. And now these are going to be attached to each other so I can go back to where it was originally and just place it where I want it to be. Just making sure that it's only going over one edge, not both edges because at the moment we don't have it set to go over both edges. So just be aware of that. If you want to be able to select this piece of cake that's behind everything, just hold the control key and you'll be able to click on it. Now we've got this one that is in a vertical position. So I'm going to run this up until we get it exactly the middle of it, exactly over the edge of the document. Hold the Alt key, hold the Shift key, drag it down until it's exactly over the edge of the document and then shift click on its other half and go ahead and group these together. So now we have an idea as to where everything is. Just going to grab this piece of cake and we can start making sure that our gaps are filled. And of course anytime I want to get behind a selected shape I'm going to hold down the control key to select that shape. So I think everything's looking pretty good here. I'm going to add some additional elements. I just looked up wavy line. I'm just using a very simple wavy line. Now this one I'm going to color with colors that are in the illustration itself. So I'm just sampling colors from these photos. I am going to make sure that these fit without touching things. So once I've got one created I can alt drag a duplicate away, just change its color, change its orientation, again alt drag it away. I think I'm going to just stick to these pink colors so I think I will 
just change that color. Now up here, if I want one to be over the edge, I'm going to do exactly the same as I did with my cake. So I'm going to take this up until I'm seeing that little marker, that little line that's telling me I've got the middle of the shape over the edge of the document. Hold the Alt key, hold the Shift key, drag down to that exact same place, let go, and then Shift click and group these together so that now I've got the flexibility. I didn't group that very well there. Let's try that again. Now I've got the flexibility to move these and they're both going to move together. But at this stage, I just want to move it over these two edges here. It's not going to work if it goes over this edge because part of it should be over here and it's not. If you want it to do that, you're going to have to be a bit more strategic about it. If we wanted to do that, what we would do is we would take this shape and place it over the edge. So you can see that I picked up that edge there. Now I'm going to hold the Alt key and the Shift key as I grab my group and I'm going to take it so that it's exactly over the edge here and then I'm going to group everything together. So I'm going to take this group and this group and group them together. So it's a little bit trickier to do the ones that go over the corners, but it will give you a lot of flexibility with your pattern. Now at this stage, I do need to move things around a little bit because I'm thinking that these are running into each other. I think I want one more of these wiggly bits here. Again, I'm going to have to use that control key to select these elements because that group, that last group that I just created is over the top of everything. So it's just a little bit tricky to select it. So let's go and give this a deeper color. I think I dragged it instead of duplicating it. So let's just go back and put this one back in again. Now that I've got my design and I think this is pretty good, I'm going to add a background color. So I'm just going to grab the background selector here. I'm going to the approximate color I want. I want something in these sorts of turquoises and I'm just going to work out what's going to look pretty good. At this point, we just need to test our patterns. So now I'm going to save this. I'm clicking the share button. I'm going to download it. I'm going to save this as a JPEG image and click to download it. Having done that, I'm now going to add a new page to my document. I'm going to click on it and press delete to remove the background. Now I'm going to upload the file that I just saved, which is this video cake pattern. I'll click once on it. I'm going to make its position the top left of the document. Then I'm going to drag on its bottom corner here because I want to size it to 1000 by 1000 because that is a quarter of my entire image. Having done that and noting that it is in the top corner of the document, I'm going to Alt drag it away because it is the correct size. Now all we have to do is position this piece and the top right. Then I'm going to select over everything, hold the Alt key and just drag down. Now I've found that I can see some white lines on the screen, but if I just adjust the scale, it seems that Canva just fixes that up. And this is my pattern. So if I'm happy with that, the pattern swatch is this one. This is just four repeats of the pattern. But if you need to make any changes, you could do so at this stage. I might just turn this one in a slightly different angle. So it's the one that's between this roll cake and the jam biscuit. So that one's this one here. So I might just change the angle that it's on and just think that I might get a better result with that. Just making sure that it doesn't go over the edge of my pattern. If it does go over the edge of the pattern, I would need to add another piece of it up here. But we will just take a quick look at the elements that went over the edge of the document. So the things that were split, which is this donut here, this biscuit here, this piece of cake here, and just make sure that they look like they're lining up and they look fine to me. There's, if they were even a pixel out, you would really notice that it's going to be really, really obvious that they're out. So let's go back to this one and let's just change its background because we can. So I'm thinking this time we might go for a darker color, perhaps a darker sort of blue here. So now I'm going to download this again. 
the new version I'm going to share and download. Now I have to be really careful here because I've got two pages in my document and I don't want to download page two. I just want to download page one as a single file. If I choose to download both pages, I'm going to get into a bit of trouble with the actual files that are saving. So I'm going to save this as a JPEG and just click to download it. I call this video cake pattern and this one's going to be number two. And we can add a new page to the document just to test this one out. And that's what the new pattern is going to look like in practice. If you were using Spoonflower, for example, then this is the document that you would be sending up to Spoonflower. Spoonflower just needs the pattern swatch itself. It doesn't need something that's actually filled with the pattern. So there's a quick and easy way of creating quite complex repeat pattern swatches and repeat patterns in Canva, just using a little bit of grouping technique to make the process pretty simple. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.